Hi, everybody. Welcome to our FRAX Pro webinar um, talking about the 1940 nanometer and 1550 nanometer non ablated fractional lasers. I'm very pleased to be here uh, to speak with you all in Europe, um, just uh, on this side and the other side of the pond. And we were uh, just using the, the FRAX Pro uh, all morning and um, love to share some of our experiences. But before we move along to the actual meat of the webinar, I have some housekeeping items that I need to take care of. Um, I did want to make sure that from a technical perspective, everybody knows how to manage the platform. So I'm just going to read that at the bottom of your screen, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there are multiple application engagement tools that you can use. All the engagement tools are resizable and movable. So feel free to move them around if you, uh, if you need to, to get the largest picture or the most out of your desktop space. Um, you can also expand your slide area or maximize it by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. Uh, if you have any questions during the webcast, please submit them through the Q&A engagement tool. And uh, if I notice them as I'm speaking, I will try to take them. Otherwise, I will glance at it periodically uh, or scroll through it towards the end. Um, at the left of the screen, you're going to find the list of resources that are related to the webinar. So we encourage you to download uh, all of those resources or links that you may find useful. Uh, and for the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection, closing any additional programs that you have, <clears throat> clo closing all the browser sessions that are running in the background that could cause some delay. Um, the webinars are bandwidth intensive, so, any, uh, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help you conserve your bandwidth. And with that, I will begin um, launching right into uh, speaking about our FRAX Pro. So FRAX Pro is a non-ablative fractional laser, um, 1550, 1940 nanometer wavelengths. And I wanna just back up uh, with a few slides that remind us of some of the differences between our different resurfacing tools. Of course, there is ablative resurfacing, which is fully ablative resurfacing. Um, which we can do with a number of different uh, tools, most importantly and most commonly CO2 laser. Uh, and that does uh, allow us to ablate the skin very precisely, uh, which will lead to new collagen formation and re-epithelialization of the tissue. Uh, however, obviously we know that it takes quite a bit of time to uh, re-epithelialize and there is a subsequent downtime that is associated with it and also a subsequent risk, particularly um, of side effects and, and particularly in darker skin patients or in patients who could be potentially sun exposed. So from ablative resurfacing, the next safest option is ablative fractional resurfacing, which is again, requires the temperatures of 100 plus degrees centigrade. And, and that is really supplied by the CO2 laser in most situations. Uh, and that is certainly uh, a better uh, tolerated alternative to fully ablative resurfacing, uh, also uh, allowing collagen to form and elastin to form, but you need to undergo the process of full re Reepithelialization. What can we do in a non-ablative format that also allows us to uh, really um, get some of these same effects uh, or very similar effects? And, and so that's when we come to the non-ablative uh, lasers. And you can fully use a non-ablative laser for bulk heating um, and a bulk thermal effect, and that's going to induce a selective thermal damage to the layer underneath the epidermis and the dermal layer, um, and there will be little or no disruption to the epidermal layer when applied properly. Uh, this is uh, very good, but there's only a certain limit to this because you can't over-bulk heat the skin, and so the results are, are, are not fully the, the type of results that we're wanting to see with a fractional non-ablative um, uh, laser. Fractional non-ablative resurfacing allows us to do uh, raise, raise the body temperature high enough uh, to get adequate collagen formation, high enough to get even elastin formation. And what is happening there is that you have very uh, similar to the fractional ablative resurfacing, you have thermocoagulation zones with spared tissue around those zones so that you have um, improved re-epithelialization or re improved in this, in this situation, improved wound healing underneath the epidermis in the skin. 
So a variety of non-ablative lasers exist, uh, other devices as well. Um, and non-ablative lasers utilize wavelengths generally in the near to mid infrared spectrum that are selectively absorbed by water. And when that heat is applied to the water, it raises the skin temperature. It produces a heat that coagulates the structures of the epidermis and the dermis. And with that, then we have a controlled wound healing response, stimulating that collagen growth within the inner dermal layer. The delivery of the energy in this fractional non-ablative format uh, is delivered in um, columns and they create areas of uh, microthermal damage. And so we call these columns microscopic treatment zones. These zones, because this is non-ablative, preserves the stratum corneum and will target the water that is in the lower uh, portions of the skin underneath the epidermis, predominantly in the dermis. When this area begins to heal, um, that healing is associated with microepidermal necrotic debris or MENS zones, uh, and those are located in the coagulated margins of the microthermal treatment zones. Fractional non-ablative laser in these uh, near-infrared wavelengths is a technology that has been uh, studied, well-studied, and also well received. And, and we have a host of literature that can be found with uh, previous generations of fractional non ablative laser. Um, this is something that has been used in a, in a wide array of uh, treatment concerns, including melasma, including burn scars, uh, including treating on the same day as toxins, uh, and including treat, treating darker skin patients and treating PIH. If you see here on the left, um, this is a study uh, that talks about fractional thulium fiber laser from 1927, and we'll get to the differences between 1927 and 1940 and the similarities between 1927 and 1940 further on in the presentation. But you can see here that in this particular um, article, uh, it was a group of patients in, from China, and the results were found to be both safe and effective in the management of melasma. Um, these patients were followed up at two months post-treatment. Uh, multiple, multiple things Dr. Jill Weibel has done um, with burn scars and uh, non-ablative laser, um, both 1550 uh, and 1940. She uh, and I just finished the uh, latest study with the 1940 laser, showing improvement in skin texture, showing improvement in pigmentation, our particular study. But she has used the 1927 uh, nanometer wavelength for pigmentary changes uh, in burn scars, as well as the 1550 nanometer wavelength for uh, remodeling of the scars. Uh, of course, she also uses um, uh, V-beam regularly uh, along with this and also CO2 laser. The treatment is something that can also be used same day with toxin. And um, very similar to hyperpigmentation um, related to the burn scars, we see that it can be used to treat post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation uh, related to a number of uh, different causes. So we're really excited because now our, uh, our Nordlist system uh, has the ability to have both FRAX 1550 and 1940, and we also have the, uh, the FRAX Pro system which can um, have the 1550 and 1940 without the IPL. And it's a very exciting wavelength. The official indications uh, uh, in Europe are the following. It has a CE mark for dermatologic procedures that require coagulation of soft tissue and general skin resurfacing procedures. So it's a very broad indication um, for, for skin resurfacing. And then a very specific indication of the treatment of actinic keratosis. Um, and that's actually important, and I'll show you why that's, uh, why that's important and, and what that means the 1940 wavelength is able to do. As I mentioned just a minute ago, the 1940 wavelength is available on two different platforms at Candela. There's the Frax Pro, which has both the 1550 and the 1940, and the Nordlist, which has the 1550 and 1940 available on it, as well as all of the applicators of Ellipse IPL the PR530, the VL555, um, the smaller uh, uh, tipped applicators for uh, pigmented lesions as well, 
uh, and all the hair removal applicators, IPL hair removal. So a big wide array. And in addition, the possibility of also including the NDAG 1064 makes this an incredibly complete platform. So what's the difference between 1940 and 1550? One might say that they're they're off, uh, awfully close um, on the uh, co the absorption spectrum, uh, but yet as the absorption spectrum is logarithmic, uh, there is quite a big difference. Uh, and there's also a difference in in the absorption of water uh, between 1940 and 1550, which we'll get to. The 1940, because of its high absorption in water, is uh, absorbed to about 200 microns. So the epidermis and the superficial papillary dermis is its uh, area of action. And then the 1550 will go to approximately 800 plus microns uh, and it will hit the superficial pap papillary dermis to the mid dermis. So uh, it, it is affected more deeply, affects the tissue more deeply. Specs, 1550 versus 1940, you can see here that the wavelength, of course, is different. The energy range with the 1550 goes up to 70 millijoules, much like um, uh, similar other products in the market. Uh, and the 1940 goes uh, from 5 to 20 millijoules per microthermal zone or my, uh, treatment zone. The pulse durations uh, are between 1 and 10 milliseconds and 1.5 and 20 milliseconds. They can be adjusted in expert mode, but do come linked so that you don't have to adjust them in the, um, in the non-expert mode or in the guided mode. Scan width, and this is actually really, I think, uh, an added benefit to this particular configuration, our Frax Pro configuration, is the adjustable scan width. Um, the ability to, uh, on the computer screen, adjust between four and 12 millimeters. The maximum is 12 millimeters, but the fact that you can adjust four, six, eight, 10, or 12 millimeters simply by pressing a button allows you to be quite agile um, depending on what you're trying to treat. And you'll see the four millimeter scan width uh, without changing a tip is something that you want to use when treating something like actinic keratosis because you want to concentrate the energy in a high density area with the four millimeters um, so that you are able to then create effectively an ablative pattern uh, using a non-ablative laser. And we'll get into that some more, but that is something that, that is extremely useful um, and you're able to do while sparing the skin around that tissue. It does have integrated uh, skin cooling, so you do not uh, need to use an additional cooler, um, but it is integrated into the, uh, um, into the handpiece. It's a comfortable handpiece, um, and the cable is, is really pretty comfortable, and um, uh, not multiple different cables, just the one cable, and uh, the aiming beam is, is visualized fairly easily. That's the important thing to note. Be when you talk about the differences between 1927 and 1940, if you see here, this is the absorption um, graph for water versus the wavelengths, and the absorption coefficients are, 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 are graphed on the, um, the y-axis. You can see that the peak is at about 1935. And the 1940 wavelength is, is closer to that peak. Is, it is more highly absorbed in water. It's a difference in terms of the type of wound injury that it creates um, also um, is, is um, th than other thulium-based laser systems. So what it's doing Dermal uh, zone compared to 1550, certainly, and uh, to some degree, uh, this is uh, the histology that 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 delineates what I'm. You see that the frax 1540 here has a short and wider um, zone of treatment histologically. So you can imagine that if you increase the density, you decrease the scan width over a very, very specific area, which you want to choose to have a very concentrated epidermal necrosis, you're able to do that, which allows you with just the system to treat the uh, pigment that is in the epidermis uh, and include 
including actinic keratosis in the epidermis, uh, again, while sparing the skin around that tissue. So that makes a difference type, but particularly for skin types uh, that could be more exposed or predisposed to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The FRAX1550 has more of a columnar coagulation zone, and uh, it does go deeper into the dermis, stimulating collagen production. So utilizing both of them is an important um, methodology for full face rejuvenation. FRAX50 does a beautiful job uh, remodeling the skin more deeply, and uh, it, even if you were to drop 1550 at lower energy levels, you do not obtain the same um, wide and shallow um, pattern of injury that you do with the 1940. So you do not have the, the same um, benefit over discrete epidermal pigmented lesions that you do with the 1940 um, because of the absorption of water. So that's a little bit about the physiology of the wavelengths and uh, general physiology of non ablational lasers. What I'll talk about now is a little bit about uh, the 1940 itself, the user interface um, uh, as it relates to, to both the wavelengths and show us, show you clinical results. Here's a photograph of a clinical progression of a mild to moderate treatment. You will see some um, men's developing as there's erythema immediately after within a one week of, of erythema and some slight edema. Um, but then you see that the microthermal, uh, the, the microscopic epidermal zones are developing at day one, a little bit darker at day two, and we begin to peel. And, and within a week, we're completely peeled out. This is the treatment screen, and there is a guided user interface which will guide you to this screen. And if you choose to go, if you see all the way laterally on the right-hand side, there's one dot, and then in this circle underneath, there's three dots. If you press that, that will get bring you to expert mode, which is the screen that's visualized here. Um, in this screen, I will go from left to right, and uh, I will show you that the energy can be chosen. In this case, it's been 10 um, millijoules per MTZ. The pulse time can be adjusted and the coverage can be adjusted. And you can go up to uh, a, a coverage of 70% if, uh, if you would like to with a very small treatment size. Um, and that's what you would use to ablate uh, the, the epidermal lesions. Um, just underneath that, there is a line with multiple blue circles and the very first shows 12 millimeters. That 12 millimeters is the uh, scan width size. And by just pressing this, you can go down to four, six, eight, or 10 millimeters. You can go in both directions, although it is uh, recommended with that arrow going down currently, and you can make it go up and down. Uh, recommended not to go back and forth, back and forth uh, over the same line, because that's quite a bit of bulk heating. Allow the tissue to give, um, some, to, to, to breathe a little bit and relax a little bit uh, so that you can then go over it in the second pass, the third pass, the fourth pass. Um, this is just some cooling and light guides, the on button, then the play button, and then as you address just the increased energy, you will see that the depth of penetration of your MTZs will increase as you increase the, uh, as you increase the energy. And again, we just reviewed this, and it shows again the, the direction of, it shows the energy, the pulse width, the coverage, um, the number of passes that are recommended, if you want to have an even less dense treatment, um, then you can increase the number of passes, um, and that will that will allow you to even uh, spread your spread your density apart even more. So so we can actually adjust the parameters even further out uh, with regards to energy by doing that. But really, this is the bottom line. What is it that we can do with, with this laser? Um, we can improve the skin texture with the laser. And this, um, you may see as uh, we will be submitting, um, now that we've finished our study, our results um, for uh, on pigmented lesions, an improvement of pigmented lesions. Here again, you see the 
uh, what you can do with the 1940 alone. Uh, in many cases, if you have the IPL on the Nord list, you certainly would uh, treat with that IPL first, uh, and you would be able to improve the pigmented lesions uh, with that. But what's remarkable about this photograph is that the IPL was not used, and the 1550 was also not used. These are results of improvement of skin texture and improvement, obviously, of the pigment um, with 1940 alone. To tell you a little bit more about this study of skin resurfacing and treatment of pigmented lesions with Dr. Weibel, we did 45 healthy adults, uh, 42 women, five men, or three men, mild uh, to severe benign pigmented lesions. So the entire spectrum of the kinds of things you would see in clinic, um, and they were lentigines, hyperpigmented um, macules, ephalids on the face, um, or the body, so both face and body were used. The subjects received two to three treatments at one month intervals, and then we did a one month follow-up and a three month follow-up after the last treatment assessment. We used a variety of scales, including investigator graded, and not by the treating physician, but external investigator graded scales of pigmented lesion severity, um, and that's a four point scale, and the percentage of pigment clearance and then investigator global assessment scores. Um, and then of course we asked the, the subjects whether they were satisfied with the treatment. In all, 232 full treatments were administered. We, um, uh, actually more than that now, but uh, topical anesthetic cream was generally applied prior to treatment for most, tre for, for most patients. Uh, it, it was required to make the treatment comfortable. Um, the treatment parameters were adjusted based on the, the, the treatment provider, but in general, we used between 10 and 20 millijoules um, with 20 to 70 percent coverage. Um, the pulse width varied uh, the, the entire spectrum. The scan width also varied the entire spectrum from 4 to 12. We used up to six passes, and our estimated depth at the, uh, at the highest energy was up to 270 microns, and the, um, the width was 350 to 500 microns. Um, so you can see the total um, uh, MTZ per pass configuration as well. If you're used to looking at the total number of kilojoules, you can see that um, you can compare that 45 to 102. We took 23 different treatment areas and we assessed them at the one month follow up and 87% uh, 80, of those patients um, had pigment severity improvement by at least one point um, and the global assessment improvement was up actually by two points um, and patients 89% were associated with, was associated with patient satisfaction with nearly 40% being extremely satisfied with the treatment area. The study also showed that the treatment was very safe. Um, there was erythema and edema present after the treatment. That was, in fact, a treatment endpoint. Um, healing was associated with the microepidermal necrotic debris or men's zones. We wanted to see that, um, and they were, uh, lo that, that those zones are located at the MTZ margins. We wanted to see that, that peeling. Um, there was no blistering, bruising, or hyperpigmentation. Um, there was one small case of a rash on the neck, which was probably related to post-treatment ointment, so very safe. I'd like to share with you some of the uh, images and, and tell you a little bit about some of the parameters here within the next couple of slides. You can see here this lady had baseline fo uh, photographs taken with a significant amount of pigmentation, then was treated with the 1940 laser, had an improvement in her pigmentation as well as her overall skin texture. This is a 51-year-old uh, Fitzpatrick skin type 3. And after three treatments, she had a three-point improvement in her pigmentation and was very satisfied with her results. How did we treat this patient? Over the course of the three treatments, um, we began first by using a larger scan width. So I go to the middle, you know, the fourth, uh, just to the left of the middle, you see scan width. And you see that the larger scan widths are used, the scan width of 12, to treat over the full face um, and treat relatively quickly over the full face. The, um, the, the coverage is generally between 30 and 40 percent, could be up to 50 percent in, the, um, in, in these particular areas, uh, depending on the amount of photo damage that there is. And the energies used here were initially 14 and 16, and then they were increased over time. Um, the pulse duration is, is listed and was matched to the energy. 
And generally in the, uh, the first treatment, there were four passes of, of each uh, energy setting um, with an est estimated depth of just over 200 microns. In the second treatment then, the specific pigmented lesion areas were treated with an increasing amount of coverage and the energy was subsequently increased and the scan width was narrowed. So you use a narrow scan width, four, uh, four millimeters, and you can uh, progress back and forth over the lesion. And that will allow you to create that zone of, um, of uh, microepithermal damage that will exfoliate off the pigmented lesion. Here's an additional patient here, again, also showing improvement in generalized tone, uh, texture, and um, uh, pigmented lesions. The three pigmented lesions that remain are, are actually moles and were, were left intact. The 47-year-old woman, uh, skin type 3, with, mild, uh, with moderate pigmentation, she underwent um, at two treatments already a one-point improvement. And then after the third treatment, her um, um, improvement was, was that much better. And whereas after the second treatment, she was somewhat satisfied, after the third treatment, she was very satisfied. And you can see here, number of different settings used for her, um, for her first treatment, her second treatment, and her third treatment. Most important thing to uh, take away from this is that the full face is generally treated with a larger scan width, and then the smaller specific areas, whether they're uh, wrinkles, uh, such as the crow's feet, or whether they're epidermal pigmented lesions, uh, you narrow the scan width, and then you can choose to increase the density if you are trying to create a um, over-densified area of, of treatment to, to have some exfoliation, or you can continue to keep the density low, but the energy very high for, uh, for specific wrinkles. I'm just going to pause for a minute and take a look at some of these uh, questions before we move along. This is a, another photograph, and this is a photograph of Dr. Jill Weibel showing the improvement in, in skin texture as well as pigmentation. And I am just going to pause and look at some questions real quick. How close can you go to the eyes? Let me just back up here. You do want to make sure that the patient has eye shields on. Um, and remember, it is a laser that absorbs water, and of course, the the cornea, um, the the conjunctival tissue has water. So you most definitely want to have the eye shields on. But external to the orbit, you can treat. Um, the next question after this is: Can 1940 be useful for melasma? And as we we looked at earlier, we saw the 1927 has published literature specific to improvement in patients with melasma. <clears throat> We should note that melasma is such a difficult uh, and, and multifactorial condition that yeah, um, we would not say that any, any particular light-based device alone is the treatment of choice for, for this condition. But in combination with many of the things that we're doing, this wavelength has been shown to be, um, to be useful for, for melasma. The treatments uh, were carried out one month apart. That's uh, another question. And at what density? I'm assuming that, so the density varies. Um, you can choose, a, and for the 1940, uh, a density that is more dense if you're trying to create some ablation type of response over a pigmented lesion, for example. Um, so you could go to 50%, uh, or, or you could choose to decrease the density. If you're treating darker skin patients, you're treating pigment, uh, pigment that's deeper, um, you're trying to be more gentle, then you should use the lowest density setting. And production of elastin. The question about elastin is, is really a uh, physiologic question. And when we get to temperatures that, that are at least 67 degrees in the dermis, um, then, then we do have some, some creation of elastin. So I'll just move ahead now to the next slide here. This is another one of Dr. Weibel's photographs, and this is uh, this is really very nice because if you notice, and, and she treated a little bit differently, her focus was not on these individual pigmented lesion, lesions, so she did not increase the density in this case, but what she really wanted to go for was skin tightening uh, or improvement in skin texture or coagulation, resurfacing of the skin, as well as um, in, inducing collagen formation. And you can see the improvement in the tissue quality. The tissue is thicker. The tissue uh, has less, uh, fewer wrinkling, 
um, and uh, is, is overall um, uh, significantly improved. So you can see the tissue quality improvement in this particular photo with the 1940. In, uh, similarly, in this patient, you'll, you'll again see some thickening of this tissue and improve, uh, underneath the eye uh, and around the mouth. You can see that the tissue quality is, is significantly improved in, in this patient as well, and um, that is uh, with treatment of the 1940 in higher densities. Ideally, we, what about complementary use? And ideally, we uh, use the lasers, all of them, in a complementary fashion. Uh, depending on what our target is and what we're trying to achieve. So if what we're trying to achieve in, lives in a deeper zone or a deeper plane uh, in the tissue, then we need to have a laser that penetrates more deeply. Um, the FRAX 1550, as I said, goes to 800 plus microns, and the FRAX 1940 goes to uh, 200 plus microns. Um, difference, again, of course, is one... Um, injury pattern is a columnar injury pattern, and the other one is more of a shallow injury pattern, so you get a different benefit. So you certainly can combine the two along with other lasers. Here is one of our patients um, from the Candela Clinic, and she had both the FRAX 1550 and the FRAX 1940. You can see that the 1550 was uh, useful in improving the deeper texture, um, improving the deeper ridus. The 1940, useful in the finer tissue as well as the pigmented lesion area. And the patient has a port wine stain in the forehead. And we will be, in addition, now using the PR530 handpiece on her now that she's finished with the combination of 1550 and 1940 to show uh, how at the end we can use the Nordless platform with a third um, handpiece uh, to, to further improve the redness, particularly the port wine stain, uh, as well as some of the remaining pigmentation. This is a side view, but you can see here again with the 1550, uh, first the 1940 um, initially for the pigment was done, and then she was entered uh, to do combination with 1550 and 1940, and, and now we will finish off the, the erythema and some of the remaining pigmentation with the PR5. So, of course, multimodal treatments are, are ideal in, in many patients. Um, you can certainly use the 1550, the 1940, and optionally the ellipse IBL. The study that, that is uh, under, being under uh, taken at the moment is a clinical study with up to three treatments one month apart, passes that we can overlap the 1550 and then do the 1940 right on top of that, um, and then uh, certainly do the laser. And in some cases, uh, or the IPL, and in some cases, um, in practice, the, the IPL is, is first with the 1550 and 1940 after that. The only caveat to that is that uh, because 1550 and 1940 are so highly absorbed in water, and there will be some edema being caused by any, uh, any treatment, um, particularly the IPL treatment, then you will be impacting your depth of penetration in, in all cases. So you may choose to separate those treatments if you so desire. There's uh, some additional uh, treatment photos that I want to show you, with, uh, which, which really uh, allows you to see this combination protocol. And uh, let me just move to, to these. Again, three treatments one month apart, and then follow-up assessments at one and three months. Patients were able to see improvement in their pigmented lesions, in their redness, in their telangic tasias, as well as their textural irregularities. And this is uh, with, of course, the... Um, the uh, IPL hand pieces, the FRAX 1550, and now overlying that, 1940. And I will just show you that um, the what's most important here, apart from these results, which show that the subject showed um, improvement with uh, more than 50%, uh, showing greater than 50% improvement in vessel size. Pigmentation is also improved. And again, very safe treatment. So there's a 95% patient satisfaction when when this um, treatment protocol was used in combination. That that's the IPL protocol with the non-ablative fractional lasers. 
and you can see improvements across the board in wrinkles, pigmentary changes, skin texture changes, the suppleness and softness of the skin, as well as vascularity. And this is the treatment progression, which initially shows some, some uh, the, the original baseline erythema improving over time. And again, really the, the results tend to speak for themselves. You can see improvement in the redness on this patient. Uh, this is a patient that shows improvement in, in overall texture as well. You can see the improvement in the fine lines here, some of the thickening of the skin, improvement uh, in the um, elasticity here, the collagen that you can see as opposed to the left-hand baseline image of the cheek. The cheek is a, is a bit more full. Um, and the texture looks improved under the eye as well. This patient has an improvement of her overall tone, so the erythema and uh, pigmented uh, areas are improved. And this is the other side where you can show the improvement in the pigmentation as well as the, uh, as, as the texture. In this patient, we see an improvement of the overall um, erythema as well as some of the pigmentation. These are her photographs as well. In this patient, we see an improvement of the overall erythema as well as some, some of the mild pigmentation. And again, this is the improvement of her erythema. We scroll through uh, some more photographs which show uh, improvement again of the erythema and the texture. There's some significant improvement of both erythema and texture, including on the nose. The telangiectasia are also uh, cleared. This has some improvement also of some of the papules, uh, the rosacea, uh, as well as an improvement over the nose. You can see here this patient has an improvement of her nasal telangiectasia and significant improvement of the erythema bilaterally. You can see her side views here. So just a few more um, tips and pearls and practical insights. Going back to the Frax Pro, I'd just like to say that the Frax Pro has the single flexible fiber um, and it is very easy to hold. It's uh, lightweight, it's very easy to visualize the treatment area. Uh, it's a bit different from uh, a bulkier handpiece with multiple different pieces, and um, the cooling is integrated into the Frax Pro system, so you don't have to have an additional um, additional piece um, that uh, is attached. Um, so, so that's the uh, difference in the handpiece here. Big difference here is the uh, return on investment of the the actual treatment. The magnetic rollers on the handpiece uh, come in a pack of 10 um, and can be used for each individual patient. And so that, uh, that, that is a practice savings overall. And then the multiple scan widths uh, are, are very important as I've been discussing. The 12 millimeters is, is the largest scan width um, as compared to a little bit larger at 15 millimeters. I think where it really makes a big difference is this four millimeter scan width and being able to decrease that scan width uh, and save the adjacent tissue to really work and do some fine work on specific lesions or a fine scar um, just by switching a button, not by switching a tip, makes, uh, makes a big difference. And this is again just showing, reminding you that the depth here is controlled by the energy. So the higher the energy, uh, the deeper the penetration of the wavelength. There are a number of skin conditions that impact patients of color. Um, we spoke a little bit about melasma in one of the questions, cafe macules, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation most, uh, most commonly that can be affected um, by, by in just about everybody, but also specifically in patients with darker skin and these lesions can be uh, improved with the uh, non-ablative fractional lasers that are uh, absorbing uh, water highly, such as the 1940. There are a number of studies, and this particular study talked about, gen in, in general, 
uh, minimizing PIH risk with lower energy and lower coverage in skin of color. Um, there was the thought to consider the use of prophylactic melanogenesis inhibitors, which is uh, now some, somewhat falling out of favor, but uh, in, many, in many instances, um, for many years, we were using 4% hydroquinone uh, a week to a month prior to treatment and then resuming uh, several days after the treatment. Um, that is also something that's replaced by many other melanogenesis inhibitor options like kojic acid, arbutin, um, azelaic acid, um, and, and multiple others. Uh, the most important thing, though, when treating these patients to lower is to lower the energy and, most importantly, lower the density coverage to an area to reduce the risk of PIH. PIH is, of course, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, so you want to reduce the risk of uh, prolonged uh, inflammation, and so that's what's, what's important. So um, we'd like to use a conservative approach with darker skin types, lower coverage, um, less than 15% in a 1550, and uh, even lower in the 1940, and then consider lower energies and reducing the, the inflammation. And finally, in summary, talking uh, specifically about the 1940, our newest handpiece um, is that it is uh, a, a, uh, shows really lovely results, great results, smart features. There's a high patient satisfaction based on our clinical data. We have histological evidence of, of, um, of the MENS, which lead to collagen production. There are treatment options. It is a treatment option, skin of color, um, officially with the clearance up to skin type 5, recommended low energy uh, and low coverage to minim minimize the PIH risk. Um, 1550 and 1940 in combination uh, can be used for both deeper resurfacing and shallow resurfacing and uh, can also be used with ellipse IPL to manage further redness um, and erythema, either prior or post-treatment. Um, the smart features like the high return on investment treatments and the flexible diode uh, umbilical, as well as the um, adjustable scan width by, by uh, just by adjusting the computer screen, uh, make it a very practical, um, comfortable device to use. And we are looking forward to doing more studies that show how we can optimize various uses um, and, and show you examples of our patient outcomes. So at this point, I will go back to our um, question and answer box and see if I can finish, uh, finish answering some of these questions. So one of our questions is that my patients complain about pain after 1550, um, even with the strengthened anesthetic cream. How do you manage this, and are there any other measures? Um, we do find that cooling does, does help with, uh, with patients. Um, so you could use an additional... Uh, cooler if, if need be, um, but and particularly afterwards. And we, we, do, we do sometimes use um, nitrous oxide. It's a, um, an adjunctive uh, device that we have here um, in the U.S. I'm not sure if we have that available in EMEA, but that, that can sometimes help with pain as well. Uh, but in general, um, uh, anesthetic and, and cooling are, are the mainstays. Um, I think we've got, can we use 1550 and 1940 at the same time? And hopefully the presentation answered that uh, in the same treatment. Yes, we do. Um, as we increase the density, do you decrease the pulse duration? As, it, as you change your fluence, you often decrease or change your pulse duration. You can. You can increase your pulse duration uh, uh, when you increase your density, but you don't have to. The guided user interface will give you set parameters. The pulse duration will be linked to the amount of density and energy. Uh, however, in expert mode, you can adjust the pulse duration to allow you to uh, get a, a, a more condensed, more dense treatment as well as change the energy. Um, it can certainly be a complement to IPL treatment, and uh, as we showed, time. Well, that varies. It, it varies based on how aggressive. So certainly you can do a very light treatment with just a, a couple of passes with the 1940 for a darker skin type, or you can do a more aggressive treatment with a, a four to five passes of each laser, 1550 and 1940, uh, with higher density. Uh, depending on the skin type, depending on the problem that the patient is concerned about, you can have a downtime that's very, very small with just some erythema lasting for a day or two, or you can have some downtime that, that will take four to five days with, with some peeling. Um, and some considerable erythema.
So you have to choose your parameters, and the higher the energy, the higher the density, the more the, the passes, the, 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 the more downtime you'll have. But of course, you have to choose the, and make sure that the patient is the optimal candidate for that. Um, can you treat the epidermis over tattooed skin? It is not recommended to use non-ablative fractional laser to bulk heat in areas um, over the tattoo in general. Let me see if I can get to a few more of these questions. Just one moment. I think my screen is frozen. Just one moment here. How is this system better than the G-Max in resurfacing? I would say that the Gentle Max is not a resurfacing uh, laser. It does not cause uh, any kind of ablation. It, it, through the NDAG, it can be used for bulk heating, but uh, it's very different. The G-Max is a long pulse laser, 755 and 1064, um, that is used for hair removal, for treatment of specific uh, benign pigmented lesions, um, but not for resurfacing. 1940 to treat pigmentation on burn scars is another question. The 1940 wavelength is very similar to the 1927 wavelength. Um, they are right around the, the, um, the highest, uh, right around the um, peak of the 1935 coefficient for water. Um, so many of the effects uh, of the 1927 uh, are thought to be parallel to the 1940. And it's, it, for that reason, it's, it's, it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or hemosiderin deposition that's being treated when, when a pigmentation in a burn scar is being treated. Samantha, I think I have all of the, the questions answered here. I'm just going to look. It's a little bit, a little bit hard to multitask the question and answer screen. Um, so I, I apologize that I'm looking to the side of the computer, but I'm just making sure that I have everything here. Okay. It looks like we. We have no more questions. So with that, I hope this was informative, um, and I hope I was able to communicate how exciting this, this wavelength really is. We're seeing some beautiful results. Um, if you're able to ablate epidermal pigmentation, that says a lot about what you're able to do with the laser. So the actinic keratosis um, clearance, as well as the ability to, to genuinely treat AKs are, uh, is very exciting with the 1940. The 1550, of course, is, is a, a wavelength that penetrates more deeply has a different uh, histologic pattern, so used um, for, for real stimulation of collagen on a deeper level. Um, and then combining that also with different IPL lasers really allows you to do so, so many things with overall uh, rejuvenation as well as resurfacing in your practice. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure.